Today we're going to work on uh, using envelope distort, warp, mesh, top object, and then we're also going to work with um, puppet warp and the free transform options. So first thing we're going to do here is we're going to kind of try to make a um, maybe a horn using line segments or using segments. Um, so I'm going to start off with the round rectangle, or you can just use the rectangle tool, it's fine. And what we're going to do is just kind of round these corners. You can use the whole control and find the, the nodes, the uh, rounding nodes. Um, it's a little too thick. I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. And then just make sure that it has a gradient. I want to put a gradient on there. I want to show you how the gradient behaves when we distort it. Okay, just so you are aware of it. All right, so I'm making one segment of my horn, holding down Shift and Alt and clicking and dragging to make a copy pressing control D to transform again so we have several of them in a row I'm just going to make a group them together control G or right click group and then make a copy and just leave this copy over here I'm going to use this a bunch of times I might even need to make this a little bit smaller okay so to demonstrate how warp works in the envelope distort you go ahead and you select the object go to object envelope distort make with warp and you have about 15 options here for different warp options and automatically you'll see that it throws a, an envelope on top of it what we mean by envelope is that the contents go inside of the envelope the envelope shape this is the envelope on top I can manipulate the envelope shape by doing changing its style which is an arc horizontal it could be vertical that's the bend in its horizontal or vertical I've already got a horizontal distortion on it all right, and a vertical distortion. Next, we're going to do... All right, so that's working with warp and the different warp styles um, and understanding what an envelope is. Now we're going to work on using mesh. Same type of idea, except this one, you choose the meshes that you want. Choose how many meshes by uh, columns and um, rows, how many columns and rows. I always press preview just so I know what it looks like. You can have more columns, more rows, but the less less columns and rows, the easier it is con to control. Um, so I press OK. And from here, using the direct selection tool, quick key A, um, I select a point. See, they're all selected right now, so it's just going to move the whole thing. But if I select a single individual point, release, and then click and drag it, you will see now that I can move it. Much like it, with like the pen tool or with, when you're moving a path, you got to select that point first and then move those around. So you can see what's happening here is I can actually mold this to however I want, messing with the curves and the the points themselves to to I can actually select in between these four and it kind of moves all four of those together so that's another option alright but it's mostly just moving these guys individually much like you did with the um, mesh tool to change the um, the contents of this envelope alright that's the mesh tool now we're going to make another copy of this holding down alt and I'm going to make a an object on top. What I'm going to use, I'm going to use a, the pencil tool. I'll just draw an object on top. I don't know, maybe this is kind of like, looks like a horn, maybe. Make sure it's a closed path object. should be easier to work with. Now, I've got this as an object. This is going to be the envelope that the contents are going to go into. So even if it was red or pink or black or whatever, I select both the group of objects below, below and the objects object on top, and I go to envelope distort make with top object all control C ah look at that it actually this is what we call a broken envelope um, I'm going to release this object uh, envelope distort release and I've released that top object maybe this is a little too complex for what I have or it's in the wrong direction um, sometimes these do work alt control C no not this guy. not this time I'm gonna to have to make a, a less complex shape let's see what happens now all right I'm gonna select both of those again 
Alt Control C. There you go. And that's what we're kind of trying to do is have this mold inside there. So you can see how these shapes can be used in different ways. After you've made a shape or an object, then you can mold or uh, have these kind of hit the inside of all of the edges of your shape. All right, um, and I briefly want to touch on the Puppet Warp and Free Transform tool. So I'm going to take another copy of this, and you can at least understand what these um, things do. I'm going to ungroup these and kind of um, do two different things. Um, let's say that I had a maybe a little person here, something like that. And I'm going to show you the two things that I'm going to do with Puppet Warp. First of all, Puppet Warp is a... It's also used in Photoshop. It's an operation that actually triangulates um, and allows you to put pins and anchor points on an, a group of objects or an object or an image, whatever you're using, or a layer. And it's in with um, Free Transform. There's the Puppet Warp tool. Now watch what happens when I, I lay down one point. I've laid down one point and it triangulates, makes this into kind of like a mesh, much like facial recognition. And if we were to move things around, you could see, hey, it's just kind of moving around that point. But w as I move in and out, you can kind of see it's kind of bending, right? If I add another point, and then it will bend. These two points are now anchored. They're pinned. And now this further pin is helping me to um, f distort this further. So I can really do some interesting things with these pins. And why I made that figure up there is to show you exactly what would happen. This is what a lot of animators are doing these days, is actually putting a puppet warp onto like an individual layer or an object and then using Puppet Warp, anchoring it in two spots or maybe even three and then you can actually hey make this arm move do whatever you wanted it to do. Um, maybe have a walk cycle or several of those um, using Puppet Warp manipulating the different limbs. Alright so that is Envelope Distort, Puppet Warp and Free Transform is quite easy free transform when you have an object or a group of objects it's quick key E alright it's also in there with the puppet warp tool this is free transform that allows you to kind of skew objects or groups of objects which is fun that can be very helpful perspective warp will put them into perspective this is very good for doing walkways fence lines train tracks off into the distance, whatever you're going to do. I will sometimes use perspective warp and then um, uh, we'll probably use like free distort or envelope, or excuse me, not envelope, but uh, free transform um, and skew them in a different way, size them down, elongate them, all right, and allow you to work with that a little bit further. Free distort is the one that I use the most just for kind of moving things around pretty easily. It allows me to grab these control points and move them independently of each other. And sometimes I've used this to map things onto the sides of buildings. Um, say I have a building and then I'll just map it on there rather than have to worry about using the perspective grid tool.